tool used for visually developing or displaying a business model. And the template helps to determine and align the key business activities and their relationships to one's value propositions. Uh, benefits uh, are like it provides a structure for ideation, focuses you on your value proposition, and provides a holistic view of the business, gives a central document to share externally. All these things our guest speaker will be talking in detail. So uh, I would now request our co-panelists if they have anything to say before we hand over the session to our guest speaker for the day, Mr. Avalaroy. Professor Day would like to say a few words before uh, we start. Professor Devashish Day, would you like to say a few words? Professor Navarin Bhattacharya, would you like to say a few words before we hand over the session? No, no, I think uh, the session can start. Let's listen to the esteemed speaker. Okay. Uh, Mr. Abhir Roy, uh, he is currently Managing Director of Kolkata Ventures, Director of ECC Engineering Private Limited, Board of Advisors in Amity University Online. He is the trustee of Alfred Ford School of Business, Belgium, marketing advisor for ISCON North America and European Union, former startup advisor of Prime Minister of Nepal, board of advisor for Autol Incubation Center, UP, Odisha and Karnataka, and guest lecturer in Illinois Institute of Technology, Western, Northwestern University, USA, and eight IITs and three IIMs. Mr. Abelera is a serial tech entrepreneur, investor, and TV host who started his first startup at the age of 19 around his patent pending technology while still studying as a computer engineer at the Illinois Institute of Technology. He built it to a multi-million dollar valuation by the age of 22. He has built eight businesses in the US and India with multi-million dollars worth of products and services ranging from consumer electronics, artificial intelligence systems, healthcare process automation, food science, wireless communications, wearable technology, and graphical passwords application. He has many laurels uh, in his cap, uh, but uh, I would like uh, Mr. Avalo Roy to take over the session, and it will be surely very interesting, very interactive, and very informative. Uh, I would now request uh, Mr. Abdullah Roy to take over the session. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mukhopadhyay. Uh, my respects to Professor Day, Professor Bhattacharya, and all of you wonderful students who have joined today. Uh, lots of love to you. Thank you for joining on a Saturday. Um, so business model. This is a, a very uh, interesting topic because this is the formula on which a company makes money. This is the foundation on which the revenue generation happens. So, and it takes some time to get to this point, right? So when you start off an idea, you don't think about exactly how the revenues will come in. And even if you think, they don't often work the way you think it will work out. But as you go along building your business, finally you figure out customers are responding this way, they're responding to this price point, they're responding to this product, they're responding to this kind of uh, uh, you know, business model, and then you have something that you can see. This is my business model. This is how we make money. Right? Um, in short, before we start, in short, a business model is very similar to how sugarcane juice is made. Right? Most of you must have seen how sugarcane juice is made. Sugar cane goes in, squeezes it out, right? And juice comes out on the other side. So your efforts, your creativity, your time, all of that goes in. Value creation happens, right? You create value, you solve a problem, the revenue comes out. And the revenue, if it is more than your effort, time, energy, money, investment, then we are profitable. If your revenue is less than all of that put together, then you are making losses, right? So that's the basic funder. Now we will go into a little deeper understanding of things. 
So what is a business model according to lean startup methodology? A business model describes all parts of the company necessary to make money. So the whole point of building a business is to make money. And business model deals with all the various components, what they are, how to utilize them to make money. That's the understanding. We start with the first thing that is customer segments. This is where everything begins. Who is my customer now? Who is my customer defines what solution they want, what price point they want, what geographical location they're in. So we need to really, really hone down on the understanding of who is my customer and what they want. It's not about what I want. Customer is always king. So we now initially, uh, like you know, just giving an example, one of our incubated startups, uh, they're in Newtown and they're creating something where you can learn anything non-academic, right? Whether it's yoga, guitar, dancing, cooking, baking, all of that. So they built an app. Now we wanted to understand who would be the customer. So what we did was we started an ad, ad on Facebook with a limited budget, you know, a thousand rupees budget. And we let the ad run for age 18 to 65 of everyone in Newtown. And then we are watching who's clicking, who's calling, who's filling out the lead form. Turns out it is 25 to 35 women who are majorly interested in yoga, who have some interest in fitness, they have some interest in diet, you know, they have some interest in physical activities, and these are the people who are interested in this product. Got it. Now that we know that customer, now we can build the marketing, we can build everything women focused that age group focus, the pricing is focused for that. So it's not a broad canvas. We are able to figure out this is my customer. So everything will go according to that. So even the telecallers, we changed from male to female. So the female customers feel comfortable and we are seeing the leads actually are converting much better than before. So this is the first thing is you identify in your business model, who is your customer and accordingly you figure out the next point, which is the value proposition. What is it that they want? For example, let's say uh, this phone. For me, the value proposition is of this phone, might be that this is my office. For somebody else, the value proposition might be that it takes nice videos and selfies and all of that. For somebody else, it might be games that might be on this phone. I don't play games, but for a teenager, it might be like this. Yeah, this phone has a great CPU, uh, games are great on this phone. Okay, so value proposition of different, different people are different for the same product. When we ask, understand a customer segment, accordingly, we can cater to their brand positioning, their value proposition, right? Uh, so for example, uh, Tata Nano, big, big mistake they did, why? because they were catering to a lower middle class audience. And they were saying this car is for people who want a one lakh rupee car, basically saying it's for a lower middle class audience. It's a poor person's car. Didn't work because everybody was like, I don't want that car that is meant for showcasing me as a poor person. I want a car that makes me look like a richer person, a person of a little higher worth than I'm already at. Uh, the aspirational value, right? For that, if I have to spend 50,000 more or one lakh more, I will spend it. So we have to understand the customer and the value proposition that uh, they have, that how they think about the value proposition. So it's not about the features, it's about the value it provides to them, the value for money, the value for status symbol, the value for efficiency, the value for peace of mind, etc. Then comes distribution channel. How do you get this value proposition in the form of a product and service and get it distributed to your customer? All right. So first of all, the value proposition has to be transformed into a form that people can use, that particular target audience can use. So for example, uh, 
let's say a book, right? A book's value proposition is the, the knowledge, the thrill, uh, if it is a you know, crime thriller or whatever it is, it's not just a knowledge, it's entertainment value. Now, some people might want a physical book. Some people might want a Kindle. Some people might want a PDF. Some people like me might want an audio book, right? So first of all, figuring out, okay, the value proposition, the content is there, but what in what format do I deliver it to my customer? Right? You can deliver water in the form of water. You can deliver water in the form of ice. You can deliver water in the form of, I don't know, <laughs> something else, right? Oxygen and hydrogen separately. <laughs> then when they come to your location, <laughs> I'm just making shit up. But point is, right, it can be product or service in a certain form, a certain packaging, a certain pricing. For example, there's dynamic pricing I've talked about before, right? Uh, I am looking at make my trip, right? I'm looking at a, a, a hotel room and I look at it three times and they change the price to push it higher. I tell my employee to look at it and they're seeing a different price, right? So for they, you know, they're basically changing the, the value proposition. Like, okay, this guy's seen this thrice. He's very interested. Let's up the price and he'll pay for it because he's interested. Right. Uh, so that's what's happening. So that's trans translation of value proposition to getting the value proposition in the hands of your customers through a distribution channel. Now, this distribution channel can be online, offline, retail, right? Uh, if it is a virtual product, it, it's, you know, generally like you pay and it gets transferred over to you. So it comes with various formats. So whatever the value proposition is, whether it's Amazon, whether it's a flip card, whether it's a retail store, whether it's a direct shipping, right? Then comes customer relationships. Customer relationships is where, how do you connect with the customers? So initially, what happens is uh, the founders are the customer relationship people. Like back in the days when Urban Company was uh, just starting out, they were called Urban Clap, uh, the founder himself would pick up all the calls. You know, one of my friends actually uh, called up uh, Urban Company at one o'clock at night, and it was Abhiraj Singh who actually picked up the call and you know said, "Hey, uh, we are closed now. Uh, we will get back to you in the morning." Who are you? I'm the founder. Oh, okay, that's the reality. But eventually, you realize you can't deal with so many phone calls. You hire telecallers. Then you realize, oh my God, I have so many telecallers. Uh, they can't handle it. So you have chatbots, right? Then you create systems. Like today, we have Zomato or Uber in the apps. You know, If you're overcharged, if there's a spill, if you didn't receive your food on time, all you want to do is just go through the app, You know, one, two, three. And if you have a good history, good record, uh, they will refund you the money or they will partially refund you the money or they'll give you a credit for the next meal or whatever. Right, and you're taken care of. You don't have to talk to a human being. You are satisfied, right? So, uh, but if you try to get in touch, very difficult. So if you see Facebook, if you're doing Facebook ads and Facebook everything, you, know, you never get to talk to a human being. But when you have the blue tick, the verified uh, blue tick, then you are assigned uh, a customer care representative who will take care of your needs. Right? How cool is that? So, so that's what happens when you become a massive business like Google. You know, you, you not necessarily there'll be anybody to help you for go, Gmail problems or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you Google Ads, there's a free one eight hundred number. Right? They're providing customer care for those people who are paying Google. Um, so, like that, you have to figure out what is it. How are you going to manage your customers' expectations, and how are you going to cater to their needs? Now, on top of just, it's not just about telecalling and this and that, there's also escalation and all of that. There's a lot of things in customer care that I'm not getting into. That is the, like Zendesk-like software where all these tickets come in and then you can track what the customers are saying, reviews and all of these things. So it's a big part of marketing. If people are happy with your customer care, they will come back to you. If they're not happy, they will uh, tell everybody how awful you are and uh, bad reviews and <laughs> you know what it is. Revenue streams. Revenue streams are basically the engine of your company. 
So uh, generally it is recommended that you have six to eight revenue streams for your company uh, to be safe and recession proof. Because uh, just like a flight, it has you know, one, two on this side, two engines on this side, four engines is going. So in case one engine gets on fire, you can safely land the plane with the other three engines. Two engines get on fire, you can still uh, do a crash landing right, with two engines. So it's important that we uh, have the same thing for a business. If our only source of income is one um, and there is a pandemic or a demonetization or a, a recession, then immediately you know, we get hit and our business can you know, uh, get badly hurt and we, we might not even survive that. Many companies shut down during the pandemic because they were manufacturing businesses or business that deal with lots and lots of credit time and they couldn't survive that, that period uh, where they had to pay their employees and they were not getting paid. Three, four years worth of you know, money stuck, they couldn't survive. The point is that's why we should have upselling, cross-selling. So in this case, what happens is, okay, I build, manufacture, design, whatever, this product, but then there are many people who are after my customer. My customer already trusts me, so I can sell many more things to my customer with that trust as a currency and that's when you know i tell others like hey let's team up let's collaborate and there's revenue sharing like a doctor uh, a patient trusts a doctor right the trust is already built you give me good medicine i keep coming back to you now with that trust the doctor will monetize and we say oh you know what get a blood test done get a this test done so our diagnostic centers on average give 40% of their revenue to the doctor, 40%, imagine that. If, they're, if you're spending 10,000 rupees, 4,000 rupees goes to the doctor, 6,000 rupees goes to the diagnostic center. So very lucrative business. Then the doctor will give you medicines and they'll give you a certain kind of medicine which is only found at a certain pharmacy. It'll be like, oh, this medicine we found right opposite to my clinic. That's the only place you should get it from. Why? Because that pharmacy is also doing revenue sharing with the doctor. So you trust the doctor, you go to the pharmacy and you get that medicine only. And that particular brand can't be found anywhere else. You know, uh, <laughs> one of our startups did this. Uh, they're in Ranaghat in West Bengal. And uh, they were doing basic uh, me medicine delivery business. And they were making eight, nine lakhs a month. And they were like, wow, how can I make more money? And then they realized that why not actually sell medicines under our own brand? So what they did was they talked to the manufacturers in Uttarakhand. A lot of medicine manufacturers are in Uttarakhand. And they found that, like, for example, if you're having fever, generally you will take uh, a, a medicine like, uh, what is it called? God, I'm forgetting. <clears throat> Yeah, paracetamol sort of. Paracetamol, yeah, yeah, paracetamol, right? But the paracetamol can come from multiple brands, right? But the, the medicine, the, whatever the ingredients is, is the same in all the brands. Uh, some brands are well-known, some brands are not so well-known. So this guy from Ranaghat, he, he talked to uh, the manufacturer and he said, look, you have the licenses and you made sure everything is there in place. It's like, okay, so you just make the packaging in my company's name and the branding and everything, but the, it's a heart medicine that he chose. And the heart medicine, he was able to uh, basically order a thousand quantity. And then he told the local doctors that for this particular medicine, you use my brand, they'll be available in such and such pharmacies. And uh, you know you will get this much kickback. Now, the medicine, you know, manufacturing cost was six rupees and the price for selling the medicine, the tablets was 260 rupees, right? So there's a huge, huge profit margin. So even with 40, 50% of sharing his revenue with the pharmacies and the doctors, he still makes hundreds of percentage right, in profit. And that's what he has done. So in that whole area from Kalyani to Ranaghat, uh, all these doctors and pharmacies, we have inundated with his uh, brand of heart medicine. And they all recommend that brand. And you can't find that. Heart. Like if you're from Calcutta and you go to those doctors and you come back to Calcutta, you will not be able to find that medicine. But the doctor says you have to get that brand medicine only. Only then it will work. So it's not ethical. Uh, having said that, this is how this business works. So it's upselling, cross-selling, and thereby increasing your revenue engines, right? And you're able to uh, make revenue from multiple places. So all these doctors, their vacations are paid for. 
I'm, I'm harping on doctors because it's an easy uh, target, you know. So their vacations are paid by the pharmacy companies. Their vacations are paid by, you know, all these, uh, uh, what you call, uh, Practo and whatnot, right? Every brand that they're using are giving them packages and gifts and holidays and whatnot. So doctors happily are recommending them and monetizing their trust. That's why we don't trust doctors anymore. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so that's the revenue streams, right? So multiple revenue streams is a very key aspect. Now, re within revenue streams, there is one-time revenue, there's a uh, subscription model, where there's recurring revenue and all that. So it is important that you focus on some form of recurring revenue, annual, monthly, or whatever, but you have a recurring revenue coming in. So you can bank on it that, okay, at least this part of my business will be running on recurring revenue. And that part of the business can be on one time. This part of the business can run on, uh, you know, cross-selling, upselling, and whatnot, referrals and this, that. Then comes key resources. What makes you so special? What makes your business so special? So what are some key resources that you have? And every business should have key resources. Otherwise, they don't have a competitive advantage. You know, I was uh, dealing with a startup in Rachi. And there was just a simple app that connects tutors to students. Um, and uh, I asked them that, you know, what, what is your competitive advantage? Because there's so many apps out there. So how will you compete? He's like, so we don't care about other, uh, you know, scaling nationally. We only care about Rachi and Rachi, we will be a monopoly. We are a monopoly. I'm like, how can you make, say that? Because somebody else can copy your idea and bring in. Uh, and he's like, sir, you don't understand. I chief minister ka bhatija ho. Move forward again. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, so they are related to the chief minister. So apparently they have the, the gundas and whatnot to make sure there is no competition. Um, unethical, illegal, uh, but it's a business advantage. And many people do that. When Ola Uber came up, you know, and Raipur Airport, uh, I personally know this, uh, they would... Any time Ola or Uber would be called to the airport, the local cab drivers would have be ready with hammers and sticks, and they would break the the glasses of the cabs, right, uh, creating their own, own advantage uh, in that way. Now I, I'm not sure that happens anymore. Probably doesn't. Uh, and that's not a way to sustain yourself either. But uh, you know, some people create. You will see like certain businesses like uh, for what do you call solar right? Alternate energy. These businesses are very much in the hands of relatives of politicians or influential people. Like Abhishek Bachchan, for example, God, I'm being recorded. Abhishek Bachchan, for example, uh, he has access to a lot of these businesses in the Western belt, right? The smart cities and all. Why? Because Amitabh Bachchan became the brand ambassador, I think, for Gujarat. And uh, they, you know, he never does anything free. So in exchange, that was the, the deal, right? So you'll see that some of those smart cities, uh, alternative energies, these kind of businesses are in the hands because they have a certain competitive advantage, right? So in business, this happens all the time. So people think uh, very naively, but business and politics goes hand in hand. Businessmen, entrepreneurs in a capitalist society, entrepreneurs are the ones who push policy making so that their business uh, goes well and they can make lots and lots of profit. This is part of capitalism. So having a key resource in your business at a very basic level is important to have some competitive edge. I'm sharing obviously extreme examples, but uh, at the very beginning, you should have good engineers or if you have good connections or you're backed by a uh, Ekta incubation center, WBUT is stamping you. So, you know, you're, uh, you have uh, some kind of, validation that, okay, you're not just an Aragari startup, you are supported by the uh, a government uh, entity, government college, right? So, so key resources are very, very important. Then comes key activities. What is it that you do? What is your key uh, activity? So for example, it could be manufacturing, it could be designing, it could be uh, developing, it could be different things. So what, what is it that your startup does, right? Uh, for example, Apple would be considered a manufacturing company, manufacturer of consumer brand, or let's say a Facebook would be a social media platform. They are developing and designing a social media platforms. So different companies have different key activities. Then comes 
key partners. Key partners are basically uh, the most powerful way of growing your business, right? So there are different kinds of partners. There are partners who are like, okay, here's a legal partner who does my legalities. Here's my uh, partner uh, for tech who does my tech and all that. But key partners, strategic partners are a whole different thing. Strategic partners are basically uh, companies that grow when you grow and you grow when they grow, right? So for example, um, a strategic partner combination for a startup would be okay, government of India and and Pay, Paytm, right? Paytm was struggling for many years to build digital wallet. You know they were charging uh, phones and whatnot, whatnot. They were doing a lot of different things, but nothing was sticking that much because India was not a digital economy per se. But then the prime minister. You know, pushed forward with demonetization. Mr. Shah, would you kindly mute your mic? Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so, uh, so the prime minister was seeing uh, the digital India vision, and uh, Vijay Shekhar Sharma very rightly saw that he can align with the prime minister's views, and there could be tremendous potential. And if you notice, during that time, the prime minister was. Uh, talking about you know black money white you have been given one year to create bank accounts then one year to uh, you know give you black money for 40 percent uh, uh, you know taxes and whatnot so there was indication at certain levels of society that something is going to happen and push for digital economy is going to rise and then we had the dem demonetization situation i think 7 30 prime minister modi uh, gave that declaration that from midnight, uh, all thousand rupee uh, notes and you know five hundred rupee notes would be uh, not valid anymore. That evening, um, PTM's PR team contacted all the newspapers, and they offered twice, sometimes three times the money for full page ads to cancel the other people whose ads were going to go there and they made Paytm supports demonetization ads. In literally the first three days of demonetization, Paytm's user base grew by 300%. Because now that money, you know, cash was such a problem standing in uh, alliance and everybody was downloading Paytm. And then Paytm opened up Paytm Bank. And then people were opening Paytm bank accounts very easily. They were able to open the place. So like that, Paytm completely aligned itself strategically with the government of India and took advantage of the demonetization situation and grew massively, massively for quite a few years till Google uh, Pay and Phone Pay and everybody else started nibbling at their market share and uh, eating them up. And now Paytm has been pretty badly you know, damaged, but they're still doing well. They're doing far better than they were doing before demonetization, right? So it's important to understand how a strategic partner can help you grow. Now that's on a big scale. Let's talk on a small scale, right? <clears throat> so I am one of the founders of Bengal Business Council. Uh, in Bengal Business Council, we have gotten around 300 Bengali brands, uh, like you know, from Senko Gold to PC Chandro to KC Das, to Mandiratu um, and Sons, and so many brands are there, Bengali brands in uh, Bengal, and we've gotten all of them under one roof. Now, the way we do strategic partnership is like, okay, here's a startup. Um, somebody can help them with funds, but we will help them with customers. So we will be your first customer. Okay, you're selling t-shirts, fine. Uh, I need to get t-shirts for 1,000 employees. I'm gonna give you an order for 1,000 t-shirts boom, suddenly you grow, right? So that's how we are helping, you know, young, young startups are becoming their customers, right? So thereby, uh, there are various ways of helping. Obviously, everybody looks for cash funding, but in this case, we are becoming your customer and giving you that chance, that opportunity to, to grow. So like that, there are many ways that a startup can latch on to a bigger company and they're able to leverage or a bigger organization or a government 
or some kind of way of strategic partnership to grow in leaps and bounds. Although you are a tiny startup, but, but you hold on to a bigger uh, network and with them you go at full speed. Just give me 10. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so that is uh, strategic partnerships or key partnerships. And then comes our cost structure, right? What is a cost structure? Employees, salaries, there is um, rent, there is server cost, there is softwares, uh, there is taxes, there is all kinds of uh, costs that are involved, uh, sometimes even, uh, you know, tipping people to get things done faster also is part of the cost. So all of this put together is called the business model canvas, right? Now, um, this is generally how the business model canvas looks like. And, you know, if you have a business, you can easily download something like this online and fill out all these little uh, things for your business model canvas. So starting with customer segment, revenue stream, channels, customer relationships, et cetera, et cetera, you quickly have your business model canvas. Then here's an example of a business model canvas for LinkedIn, right? Now for LinkedIn, let's look at, now that you understand how the business model uh, you know, what all it caters to. So this is a case study example. So customer segment. First thing is we see internet users, recruiters, advertisers and marketers and developers. Uh, so these are the people who are using LinkedIn. It's generally the major population of LinkedIn users used to be recruiters. Now it is almost everyone who has a corporate job. But uh, for hiring is a great, great, uh, it becomes a lot easier with LinkedIn because the value proposition is that you have access to database and people, and, uh, you know, their real uh, uh, endorsements and whatnot. If people lie on LinkedIn, people can shout out, right? When you lie on a resume, nobody knows. Anyway, so uh, value proposition is you know, manage professional identity, build professional network, identify, reach the right talent, firing, to reach the target audience, access to the database through API and widgets, right? You can actually directly use the API. LinkedIn is your resume online. So that's the value proposition. Um, the channels, LinkedIn website and LinkedIn app. These are the two ways they're reaching. Uh, field sales, but we will not talk about that. That's more B2B. But generally website and app, that's how LinkedIn connects with its customers customers use the platform, right? What is a relationship? Same side network effect, cross side network effect. Uh, don't ask me what that means. In short, basically, uh, LinkedIn's you know, customer relationship is online. There's nothing offline. Uh, and if you are an advertiser, then only you get access to, to people. Otherwise, you don't have access to physical people, you, you can email them and whatnot. So that's the customer relationship. Okay, um, key activities, platform development. That's all, all they do, right? They have an online platform and they develop it. They make it better and better and better, more relevant, uh, better artificial intelligence, better search, uh, hashtags, all of that. Key resources, LinkedIn uh, platform is their key resource, right? Uh, it is such a massive platform for professionals. Uh, there's nothing like it. Nothing that has copied LinkedIn has ever been able to come even close to it. So their platform itself is their key resource. Uh, partners, so data centers, uh, content providers, right? People who write and keep people on the platform. So it's important to understand that uh, these algorithms, whether it's LinkedIn or YouTube, or uh, Instagram or Facebook, the creators are uh, what 
is their source of content. Like it is crowdsourced. They don't have to create it. The creators are doing it. So sometimes they pay the creators, right? For example, YouTube pays its creators for every uh, video they make where there's advertising revenue coming in. YouTube is paying the creators. Uh, I personally, for example, my channel ads are turned off. The only places you'll see ads is where uh, there's some copyright infringement for the background music or something. But otherwise, ads are turned off. I don't want YouTube's money. I want my viewers to get a, you know, to watch my videos without any interruption of ads. But most people do videos on YouTube to make money. So on LinkedIn also, there are LinkedIn influencers and whatnot where LinkedIn is, uh, uh, you know, monetizing them or giving them awards, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, TikTok, when it launched in India, I know many of my friends who teach yoga, who teach guitar, they were like saying, hey, you're already famous on social media. I'll give you 5,000 rupees per video. Why don't you go make videos for TikTok, right? And they do that. Uh, you know, people like me, I get paid money to endorse things on LinkedIn because I have around 29,000 followers on LinkedIn. Uh, so, so, you know, there's a lot of monetization that happens on these platforms, but the strategic partner for like somebody like LinkedIn would be people like us who are creating content, who, who LinkedIn, you know, uh, cultivates and makes sure that they continue to create content so that people stay on the platform long enough. Then comes the cost structure, the revenue stream, the cost structure we are hosting, marketing sales, product development, and general admin. And revenue stream is like, you know, premium options, subscriptions, hiring solutions, marketing solutions. So LinkedIn offers a bunch of uh, things like you pay 2000 rupees a month and you'll get that golden LinkedIn logo and you, you know, all of that cool stuff. <clears throat> the point of uh, the whole thing of business model is to really look at the formula for making money and see how to streamline it. What's the best way, what's the most efficient way of going from idea to revenue. And in this journey, in this process, what happens is uh, you evolve as you go, your business model evolves as you grow and slowly, slowly you find out, oh, this is a better way of doing it. And people give you feedback and all that. But also, you know, going back, uh, to, to this aspect, when you have a thriving business and a running business, and you have reached a certain plateau, and you're wondering, why am I stuck at 10 crores? Why am I not moving to 15 crores? It is important that we look at this picture and we fill out uh, you know, this canvas, this business model canvas, and thereby you will see the weak link in your chain, right? Where is your weakest link? And you'll realize, oh, I don't have key partners. That's why I'm not growing. Oh, my distribution channel is uh, too old. I need to have more distribution channel or I need to have more online distribution. That's where all the people are, et cetera, right? So we figure it out based on this. This is a tool for us to kind of look at, introspect and figure out where is the missing link. So it's not just at the beginning of your business that you create a business model canvas, but also as a thriving business, uh, which is reached a saturation point and wants to expand and grow, that's also when you come back to this and you look at various aspects and you see where you are weak, where uh, you're kind of stuck, right? And based on this, you can actually, you know, look at the various ways that the model can work, whether it's manufacturing, where you're selling, you know, make one to sell one, the service providers where you have for every person there is hourly rate, there's billable hours, and you charge like law firms, chartered accountant firms, consulting firms, and whatnot. And then there are software companies, you know, where you make one, you sell to many, you make one app, and you're selling it to billions of people. Uh, so your profitability is through the roof. Of course, you have to maintain it. You have to have custom. You know, you have to have employees to maintain uh, the software. Server costs also grow as you grow. But nevertheless, it's not like you're manufacturing, right? And then platform as a service, where you are a platform, you don't do anything. You just maintain the platform. Somebody is selling. Somebody is buying, and you make money per transaction for letting them use your platform. 
So this is basic idea of business model canvas. Once you understand this, uh, you understand what all the different aspects of business, different uh, working models of the moving parts of the business that are there, the formula for making money. So I'll pause here and I'll see if our esteemed co-panelists have anything to add. Thank you, uh, Mr. Abrindo. Uh, Mr. Navarin Bhattacharya, would you like to say anything? Mr. Navarin Bhattacharya, would you like to say anything? See, basically, uh, uh, basically, uh, basically, I was listening and uh, very vivid picture of this uh, um, uh, this topic has been given by Avelo as usual. So I look forward to questions and answer session and I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Shaw, you, you, you have anything to, I mean, interact with Mr. Avelo? Uh, no, it's fine. I think we can have some uh, question answers. Uh, sing this at all. Something is there. I can see some questions are there, so we can go ahead with the question. that one. And after that, we we'll... yeah, uh, we will take the question. Just wanted to, I mean, you know, convey one thing that you know this uh, business model canvas is very important and. Uh, um, it gives a lot of advantage in many ways. And uh, the way uh, Mr. Avalo has uh, explained this one, this is uh, really quite commendable. And uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, unless you, I mean, plan your business and see where you are strong, where you are not, and all this kind of thing, uh, as he was saying that <laughs> identify where is it, do you have key partners? What are your key activities? What are the key resources? You just have to introspect and put it on a piece of paper and challenge yourself, really, do we have resources? And what are the key resources and all? Do we have good customer relationship? If at all, then who are those customers? What is our go-to market channels? Who are our channels? Who are our customer segments? This kind of thing, uh, we must, uh, you know, think and put it on a piece of paper and challenge ourselves that really those are existing or not existing. So uh, this is quite, I'm sure that uh, the uh, young startups uh, or who are aspiring to become an entrepreneur uh, will be able to connect with themselves. And this is a good advice given by Mr. Averro and sure that they will be benefited out of this. Let us see if any question uh, answer, anybody is asking anything. Uh, here is a nice meeting. I don't see any questions over there. So um, uh, if there is no question, <coughs> I will uh, request uh, Mr. Shaw uh, to give a vote of thanks to Mr. Avello for his wonderful speech. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Mukhopadhyay. Well, it was, uh, as usual, this uh, webinar or workshop on business model. As you rightly, uh, rightly pointed out, uh, Mr. Mukhopadhyay, I mean, one, everybody needs a model. So commencing something, there has to be some setup some uh, planning, some model has to be there to take it further. And without the model, uh, it, it will be very difficult to start up anything. And of course, the components that uh, Mr. Roy was very clearly explaining about the important resources, the, uh, the, the key partnerships or the key activities, and also the, uh, you know, the, the different partners, one thing I I felt uh, as he was uh, as he was describing about that trust of the uh, between the doctor and the patient. 
ऑल्दो देर इज अंग इन इन न्यू डू दैट मोहब्बत और जंग में सब कुछ जायज है तो आई मीन इन बिजनेस फॉर गेनिंग दनी दैट वे दैट सब कुछ जायज है बिकॉज एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इफ दैट पर्टिकुलर कस्टमर when customer is god atithi devo bhava when we say in tourism so whoever is a customer for a businessman the customer is most important because at the end of the day that customer is bringing lakshmi to him for whatever whatever product he is having he gets a proper customer and, and the customer has that confidence uh, that built up uh, relationship he will come back to uh, a similar thing when he was giving that example of the the hotel booking and all that we find that any travel agent or a tour operator they have different types of packages if one one traveler has gone with that particular x company to south india and the services have been good for north india plan also he comes back to the same uh, same travel agency or the same operator that do you have something about north india or east india and vice versa so the, the idea is that they the service that has been provided or goods whatever has been provided if that is to the liking of the customer i feel that that also is very very important the business model to keep up your uh, long term relations i would say that aisa nahi hai ki ek murghi sone ka anda de rahi hai to ek din kaat ke sab sone ka anda nikal jayega ek ek din jaise purani kahani thi na ek sone ke ande ki murghi thi the wo isne socha ki chalo ek hi bar kaat ke sab nikal lete hain the relationship long term relationship i think it's very important uh, nevertheless i was I, the business model as rightly pointed out and very, very clearly vividly described by mr roy will will be very very helpful to the young entrepreneurs and for the those who are looking for the startup i i i thank from my core of my heart mm-hmm. on behalf of our university and all my colleagues to mr uh, avil roy for giving his uh, very precious time in today's webinar and speaking uh, sharing his uh, experiences uh, and the knowledge to all the participants today uh, we look forward for future such type of uh, of course we have got it lined up a number of webinars and workshops with him uh, with mr oil and uh, hopefully in the coming days also uh, today somehow uh, i do not know what in between a number of participants it started with something 30 plus but now we are in 44 it has jumped up a bit uh i i be among myself only when this going a little bit more of a circulation about this uh, is required in different more posts so that there must be more people who would be would have loved to join today and hear mr roy on this business model uh, thing that was very very important i also thank uh, my colleague professor navin bhartaria and mr professor mukhopadhyay and of course mr prem kumar uh, the technical team for very very efficiently conducting today's webinar and with this i i come back to professor mukhopadhyay for the closing part thank you thank you mr roy once again aapka bahut bahut dhanyawad sir follow the pleasure thank you thank you mr sir thank you very much you touched up any point about the customer long term relationship and all we have uh, got a question from one of the participant mr akash kumar mondal is asking how to make good relationship with customer so i may request our uh, guest speaker mr roy to answer this before we close so uh, that's a broad question <laughs> of <Offer laughs> good relationship with the customer uh, offer them good products and services make sure they're happy um, there, there are many ways of looking at it one is uh, you know when you're selling if you there there's a saying that selling a comb to bald people that's not the kind of selling that should be done or selling ice to the eskimo right when you do that people hate you like i didn't need it you pushed me to buy it and i have no use for it so uh, first of all the selling process should be such that you are a friend who genuinely are seeking out for the benefit of the customer and you give them your product and service that will genuinely uplift their life that's number one if it does genuinely uplift their life they will write good reviews there are chances that you will screw up right uh, there will be mistakes and those customers are the best ones because when you do something right nobody talks about it but when you do something wrong and you fix it thereafter people write good reviews 
right? For example, if you go to a hotel and they you would get everything you wanted, you will not write a review. But let's say you had a bad room and the hotel manager said, oh, I'm so sorry, let me give you a better room and here's a free meal, you know, because you had a bad experience. Immediately you feel good and you write a good review. Oh, hotel staff is so friendly. Oh, they have done such a good job, whatnot, whatnot, right? So there is, a, 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 you know, when you have difficulties with customers, see that as a great opportunity to, uh, you know, turn the opinion around and it is seen statistically speaking People with a bad experience turned into a good experience are the ones writing reviews and become long-time customers, sign up for your loyalty uh, uh, points or whatever you know, long-term things you have versus people who just have a good experience and go away. That doesn't mean you purposely give bad experience to people. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is in your you know, dealing with customers, one is sell it to the right person who will be benefited, who will bring in their friends because they've been benefited. But in case you screw up, use that also as an opportunity to build good reputation, good rapport, where people can, uh, uh, you know, uh, see your genuineness in serving them, and everybody makes mistakes. You acknowledge it, you listen to them, you fix it, and you show it to them, and they become your biggest fans. Right? Uh, some ideas on how to uh, get your customers to love you. Just to okay. add a few points, uh, you know, just convert a customer. Uh, to a client, you know, and uh, be an advisor or a friend to the customer. Don't try to push through any particular product or services through the throat of a customer who is unwilling. You know, develop a good relation and try to develop the trust that whatever you are proposing and whatever you are suggesting is not purely from your point of interest it is from the point of interest of your client so once they start uh, trusting you once they think that yes you are the proper advisor for him then you know uh, it becomes easier for you uh, to you know develop a good relationship with your client or customer whatever you say and these are very important, you know, that many times it so happens, the product which you are not dealing, even then they will call you and take your advice that can you suggest me a good product or good brand uh, which can serve this kind of, uh, you know, functions or this kind of uh, requirement. So try to become a uh, consultant or advisor or friend to your customer, then, I mean, you can sell many things. And maybe sometimes, you know, they come back with certain requirements, which does not uh, fall into your product bucket. Uh, that time you can change the requirement, upgrade the requirement and all. So there are many ways, as Mr. Avilo was saying, that uh nothing only i mean you know good talking will not really help you have to give good product and good services too and with reliability with trustability and all this kind of thing so let's see if there is any more question then we'll take uh, uh no i don't see any other questions so thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Roy, once again uh, for the wonderful uh, lectures. I'm sure that all the participants have got a lot of information, a lot of their concepts have got cleared. And thanks to everybody, thanks to all the, I mean, you know, co-panelists here today, and thanks to uh, our uh, entire management team of the university. Thank you very much. Thanks, Prem. Thank you. Thank With the you permission so of all much. of you, I am drawing this session to closer. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.
थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग द प्रोग्राम प्लीज नोट डाउन द फीडबैक लिंक प्रोवाइडेड इन द चैट बॉक्स